Welcome to One Brooklyn, presented by Brooklyn Borough President Eric L. Adams. On this edition of One Brooklyn, Borough President Adams joins with Council Members Lori Cumbo and Robert Cornegay Jr. to announce legislation to provide safe, healthy access to lactation rooms in New York City. The announcement coincided with the National Breastfeeding Month and took place in front of the ground floor lactation room in Brooklyn's Borough Hall. The lounge, which has a hospital-grade breast pump, rocking chair, and educational literature about breastfeeding, was established in 2015. And that room established a movement that resulted in the first in the nation legislation from the borough president and the council members to establish breastfeeding-friendly facilities in public buildings across New York City. The borough president, council members, and advocates spoke at a press conference about the importance of ensuring all mothers have access to safe, healthy lactation facilities in the city. Majority Leader Lori Cumbo, and of course, whose house we're in right now, uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. Um, as we mark the end of National Breastfeeding Month and announce new legislation to improve cleanliness, safety, and accessibility of lactation rooms, as well as training for staff, we've become increasingly aware of the multitude of health benefits that breastfeeding provides to infants. It is actually and literally first food. It's essential that we do everything we can as communities to empower moms to be able to safely and healthily breastfeed their children. I encourage fathers to educate themselves on breastfeeding and help their partners in raising children. After mom feeds the baby, you can strengthen your bond by burping the baby. But make sure you put a cloth on your shoulder. <laughs> Learn that valuable lesson. Um, I'm blessed to be a father of six children. And this whole process started for me because when my wife uh, was pregnant as an executive uh, at some of the top law firms in the city, she found it increasingly difficult to express milk in safe, sanitary conditions. And I promised her way before I ever got elected that if I ever had a chance, um, we would make sure that we promoted breastfeeding, but also we would uh, provide lactation spaces. Um, so in 2015, our district office opened the first public lactation station in a government office in the city. I've introduced and had other bills passed that increase access and resources for breastfeeding mothers. I'll continue pushing for expanded access and education around the topic and will continue supporting my colleagues who are pushing legislation like Lori Cumbo that reach these goals. I just want to say I don't want to tell Lori Cumbo's story, but as one of um, uh, a, a recent uh, new mother, um, having her as an ally and as a stakeholder in this work has been um, increasingly important. I think you know my, my youngest children at this point are a set of 12-year-old twins. And while we may be uh, somewhat out of the woods as it relates to First Foods, there are so many other families who have benefited from either watching the council member um, as she has used her ability in spaces to be able to breastfeed uh, the great prince, um, but also my borough president who said that he would actually do what they call leading from the front. And being a borough that adopted these methodologies and having uh, one of the first public lactation stations here in Borough Hall has really demonstrated who we are as a borough and that we actually are committed to leading this city on issues that are important and germane to children and families. So nursing mothers deserve to have access to safe, clean, and comfortable space to breastfeed or express breast milk. And I want to say, contrary to what was said um, in the past, just because lactation spaces are available doesn't mean you can't breastfeed your child anywhere at any time that you like. So this is not trying to hide the idea of breastfeeding. This is just finding comfortable sanitary spaces in addition to what the law says that you can breastfeed uh, anytime, anywhere. I'm proud to stand alongside those working to make it easier for moms to breastfeed. And I think it's very important that we hear from uh, my colleague and the majority leader at the city council who's actually led in so many ways, but certainly on this topic, um, Lori Cumbo. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, council member Robert Cornegy for your leadership. And thank you so much to our Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams for being such a champion on this particular issue. This is so important for us to continue to highlight the importance of breastfeeding. Um, and as Council Member Cornegy mentioned, I uh, recently gave birth two years ago to my son Prince, and I wanted to breastfeed my son. It was very important to me. 
There were challenges ahead of me. I was running for office. I gave birth in August, and my election was in September, but I was committed to making sure that I wanted my child to be breastfed. And I looked at all of the magazines and the books about breastfeeding, and I saw these moms, and they were happy, and they were breastfeeding. And then when I tried it, it was the most painful experience in my entire life. So I don't want to sugarcoat this, because when I started breastfeeding, I was like, something must be wrong, because this hurts. This is painful. This is probably the most excruciating pain I have ever felt in my life. None of the magazines look like that. None of the covers of the books like that. None of the happy moms that are at La Leche were talking about that. Um, but through conversations with a lot of moms, they would say, get through this period. Just get through this time. There's going to be that instance where it starts to actually feel OK. And I went through that passage. I guess you could say the initiation. And through the initiation, eventually, it became the most comfortable thing in the world. And it became so comfortable that during the time that I had to wean my son from breastfeeding, it was so sad and so depressing that we were going to be uh, not having that closeness and that bond, which became the most beautiful experience of my entire life. I mean, I have pictures breastfeeding him because I just wanted to hold on to that memory. And oftentimes, it stated that women of color um, do not breastfeed. And, and that is something that we have to address. Not that it's not entirely true. Um, a lot of it is around economics. It's around our workplace environment. It's around not being in spaces that uh, produce an environment for us to be able to breastfeed. So the legislation and the work that we're doing is to create more safe spaces, to create more time. And it's about the space, because here at Borough Hall, Borough Hall, I would come here to breastfeed in between meetings, the most beautiful environment ever. I mean, if you're breastfeeding and you're in Brooklyn and you're downtown, I mean, it was almost kind of like an ego booster. I'm breastfeeding and pumping milk here at Brooklyn Borough Hall's office. So it's comfortable. They have comfortable chairs. They have a comfortable environment. It really is uh, the quintessential <clears throat> space. Councilmember Carnegie also has a very beautiful office. Assemblymember Walter Mosley. I mean, the guys are really out here doing it um, as far as making sure that we provide those safe spaces. And, uh, Councilmember Carnegie also mentioned that this is an environment and a, an experience that men can benefit and be a part of as well. Just like he said, you can burp, but you can also give me a foot massage. You could make me breakfast in bed. You could do the dishes. You could vacuum the house. You could put the baby to sleep. You could do the laundry. You could do all of these wonderful things that would um, level the playing field as far as breastfeeding goes. Because it's not just the breastfeeding, and Borough President and I I had what you would call a bit of a squabble about this. <laughs> it's also about eating right. It's also about shopping and getting healthy food. It's about taking the time to make the food. It's also about getting enough rest. It's also about drinking at least a gallon of water a day and going to the bathroom about 10 to 12 times a day. It's also about washing the materials after you pump, washing the bottles, putting it back. It's a process. So you need a support system, and you need family, and most importantly, you need a work environment that supports this. And that's what this particular uh, legislation that we're talking about is creating safe spaces. And in my ideal world, in New York City, the entire city will recognize that breastfeeding is the way that we go in terms of giving our children the best start. And hopefully, those healthy eating habits will extend into their adulthood years. Because healthy living and healthy eating starts right from birth. So thank you all so very much. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to champion this. But we have to make sure that every single space in New York City is a space where families can breastfeed, where they can change diapers, where they can raise their children, and we create that type of environment. So moms out there, keep pumping. Keep doing it. Forgive yourself if you can't do it, if you're trying to do it. We're not about the mommy shaming here. At a certain point, I had to breastfeed and then also feed my baby formula because I also had to switch because I just wasn't producing enough milk as hard as I tried. But I did it for about nine months. But the thing is, just try, 
Try your best, do what you can, get over the pain. I know it hurts, but we can do this. So thank you all so much, moms. Thank you. Thank you, council member. Um, one of the things I want to point out is in my office, um, there was a unintended, un unintended reward that we found. Uh, in my office, we have the opportunity to express milk and store it in the freezer till the end of the day so you can come back and pick it up, share with a caregiver, uh, store milk uh, in, in refrigerated spaces. And that's something I hadn't even really thought about. And because it's a work environment, we get people who actually come in off the street who will, who will pump their milk, store it in the freezer, label it, and then come pick it up again, which allows them the, the breast not to be engorged during the course of the day, which allows them to provide um, uh, uh, nutritious milk that's their own to caregivers that may be taking care of a baby during the day. And I think that was incredibly important. Lori mentioned that men are leading in this work, and I think it's important to note that the borough president has picked up this mantle. Now, both him and I, him more than me, um, have a child who you know, is, is nowhere near breastfeeding age. But to understand that the borough and the makeup of the borough as we grow continually, there are a you know, uh, uh, tremendous amount of births that are taking place in the borough of Brooklyn. You can look around. We're bursting at the seams. The hospitals are reporting record numbers of births. And it's important for government and for its leadership to understand the necessity for First Foods. And I'm, I'm glad to have a borough president who understood that immediately and has taken whatever mandates and has partnered with us as a council. This piece of legislation is a partnership um, driven by the borough president's office and uh, authored by myself and Lori Cumbo and Steve Levin's office. So it's that kind of partnership around the needs of a community and a borough that get us to the next level. So without further ado, I'd love to hear from uh, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman Carnegie and Majority Leader Acumbo and uh, Steve Levin, of uh, the three of them coming together with this legislation. I just thought it was extremely impactful and powerful of uh, what uh, Majority Le Leader Acumbo stated uh, because sometimes we give the wrong message to some of the tasks that we need uh, to accomplish a journey, and people start to look at themselves and say, am I doing something wrong? Why am I not smiling uh, like the person in the magazine? Raising a child those first few months is extremely difficult um, on a family, and it is particularly difficult on a woman who becomes a primary caregiver and to uh, give it a very real human approach is so important because if you don't, so many women really internalize and say, am I doing something wrong? You're not doing anything wrong. Uh, there are good days, there are bad days. Uh, there are days where it's difficult getting up. There are days when you have to deal with you know, breastfeeding. And really putting a human face to it, I think is so important. And we need to do, we need to do more of that. And, and so really to the team, to everyone who's here, who's in this space, and there's something that both the council persons stated that is crucial. We have to start building our institutions around families. Uh, we need to have uh, lactation rooms. Uh, we need to allow the refrig so that you can put the stored milk in place. Uh, we, we need to have an uh, atmosphere where children can come in. Um, if there's an emergency and if a, a child can't go to child care, let them come inside the building. These buildings don't belong to adults. They belong to families. And that is the problem that we've had for so long. Too many people who never was, were on a delivery table are making decisions of normality in our cities and in our countries. So try giving a, ba giving a baby and try to raise a baby. Then you can start writing these rules that determine who comes in a building right. and not That's in a right. building. Until yeah. then, you need to fall back and allow it to be family oriented. There's nothing I like more than when my staff have their children in going around the building, becoming familiar with the building, interacting with the building, uh, talking to each other, uh, bringing their curiosity, bringing their energy, uh, bringing, taking away from that sterilized environment and making us really refocus and say, this is why what we're doing, what we're doing, because of these children who are here. So let's continue to have a city 
that is friendly, family friendly, and that's so important. So this month is National uh, Breastfeeding Month, important initiative. Uh, uh, Councilman Carnegie led the way. He was the first uh, to have a lactation room in his office. We follow suit and have, we have a beautiful lactation room here. And it is not to say you cannot breastfeed on the train, okay. on the plane, while you're eating green, green eggs and ham, or not the green <laughs> eggs and ham, you know. <laughs> but in a real way, vegan you can breast eggs. vegan. <laughs> You can breastfeed wherever you want. That's right. We need to be clear on that. But there's some parents who would rather have a certain space, and it should not be in a toilet stall. It should be a clean, well-lit, friendly environment, but you can breastfeed wherever you want, and we want to be sure of that. So four years ago, on Mother's Day, we opened this new lactation room at Brooklyn Borough Hall and is open to the public, not just my staff, That's but right. the public can come in and use the room. It is helping mothers nourish uh, their children and pump um, breast milk, which is so important. And breast milk, all the science is there. Breast milk is good for babies. It allows them to fight off disease. It is, has been shown to help uh, deter early signs of, of diabetes or diabetes ear infection, uh, diarrhea, and it has been attached to even improvement in IQ. So it's the right thing to do. The Center for Disease Control has clearly shown the information on how powerful breast milk is. Now here's the problem. In 2011, the Department of Health found that only 14 of every 100 New York mothers exclusively breastfed their babies for the first six months. That's troubling, but the real crises go to women of color, as the majority leader indicated and alluded to. For low-income women, the number is even smaller, only five out of every 100. And there are a host of barriers that we need to look at and identify those barriers, and then we must remove those barriers to allow women of low economic means allow them to have the same opportunity, opportunity to breastfeed. So it's one thing to put up the posters, it's one thing to put up the signs, it's one thing to say, hey, come in, breastfeed, breastfeed. No, let's speak to those women and say, what is preventing you from breastfeeding so we can remove those barriers and give you an opportunity to equalize, equalize those numbers? So we want to keep this movement going. We want to encourage young people to be part of this movement, to have this conversation, and we want to encourage our hospitals. We hand out a card to every new birth in, in, mm -hmm. in, in Brooklyn to let mothers know the benefits of breastfeeding because they, some mothers really don't know. They just believe that you're just giving your, your baby milk, but it's far more than that. You are really sustaining and improving the quality of their life. We know that what happens in early stages of child life sets the stage for future development. It all begins in the early stage of their lives, and that's why we're sending a clear and loud message that breast milk from mothers is the best milk for children. Let's breastfeed our babies and continue to grow healthy children and families, not only in the borough of Brooklyn, but throughout the entire country. Thank you very much. Thank you, my colleagues in government, for this. Thank you. And so, as um, the borough president often does, he leaves us with a mandate. And uh, I'm going to follow that mandate by continually saying that breast milk is the best milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one of the things I want to say to men out there is that uh, the way that media um, has portrayed women through pornography and through uh, in writing and in, uh, is a direct result of the over-sexualization of the breast. And I think it's important that we begin to understand the, the natural God-given intent for the breast before we begin to participate in what society has deemed normal is actually abnormal. So we've been engaging and, and the country continues to engage as a puritanical country, uh, continues to engage in the over-sexualization of the breast which makes it shameful and which makes people shy away or look the other way when, when there's breastfeeding taking place in public. And we have to be, as men, responsible for doing away with that stigma. There is a responsibility in helping, as Lori Cumbo said in the House, but there is also uh, a responsibility in getting a message out about decreasing the over-sexualization 
uh, of the breast. And having said that, I want to move to, we have allies here who, who've, who've asked not uh, to speak, but who have stood with us and who have been on the ground around this issue. It would not have taken fire if not for the fact that there are so many organizations on the ground that are working to make sure that this information is out there and that education is there. Um, I'd like to hear from our third co-sponsor on this particular bill, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but has sent a representative uh, from Council Member Steve Levin's office. Hello, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Adams. I'm here as a representative of Council Member Stephen Levin. Thank you to Council Member Carnegie, to our Majority Leader, Lori Cumbo, and to the Borough President for your leadership in legislation today. And I want to give a special thank you and appreciation to the lactation specialists that are here with us today who do this work day in, day out, and are really what make this, this possible. <clears throat> a parent should never be discriminated against for caring for or feeding their child. It's about what's right for them, what's best for them, and whether that's breastfeeding or, I think as the majority leader's comments recognized, there are challenges that go along with that. I've had friends, loved ones in my life who have wanted to breastfeed, but their workplace didn't support it, they didn't have the time to spend hours when they had to get to their job and they were facing discrimination around that. Uh, so I think it's, it's really important that we put the people first and we put women first and families first uh, in, in committing to saying no, no one should be facing stigma or discrimination for, for the decision around breastfeeding and around feeding their children. Along with that, a parent should also not be forced into an unsanitary space to breastfeed or to pump which is what brings us here today and why this legislation I think is so important. I remember when we worked to pass Council Member Carnegie's first bill on this issue, requiring city agencies to make lactation rooms available to members of the public. I was actually working at Planned Parenthood at the time and was extremely proud to support this bill as an advocate. And today we're here again because we recognize the need to go further and to continue the push for policies that expand people's access to, to lactation rooms and to pumping ab abilities. A report came out earlier in the spring that found that many spaces listed on the city's websites were difficult to access, were not cleaned properly, and sometimes unavailable altogether. And that's frankly unacceptable when we've done so, so much work to say that our city should be doing more on this. An important part of our government's role is our oversight capabilities. But unfortunately, there has been a real lack of oversight of lactation rooms by city agencies to ensure that every nursing parent is provided the space that is respectful, that is in their best interest for their well-being and for their health. And it also goes without saying that lactation rooms ought to be properly maintained and easily accessible. Frankly, I would have thought that was written into the bill in the first place. But <laughs> Uh, and this is a real matter of, of public health and an issue that disproportionately impacts women. If we are as a city are committing to our values of gender, of gender equity and of parental rights, then we need to do more to make lactation spaces accessible. And the models that we are seeing in the borough president's office and council member Carnegie's office show us how we can do this. Show us the world that we want to be living in, that we should be living in, and that people deserve and all people should have access to. It's, I think it's incredible to hear about um, the, the parents that are using these resources day in and day out, but we want everyone in Brooklyn to have that. We want everyone in New York City to have that. And along with, with making lactation spaces more accessible, I also want to highlight the importance of what we can be doing here during like, Breastfeeding Awareness Month to provide greater education of breastfeeding resources and also looking at compliance with our current breastfeeding laws. All employees and employers have a responsibility to, to follow our city's laws and make sure that lactation and breastfeeding is accessible and, and supported. And this bill is an important step in providing the care and treatment that all of our parents deserve. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I'm just going to ask for the lactation specialist in my office, Catherine, uh, to speak briefly, and then we're going to close out with um, uh, the majority leader who has some final comments. Um, I do want to just read the language in the bill 
that we're talking about here today. It's intro 1662, and it will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to provide mandatory annual training to staff at locations required to make lactation rooms available including protocols for providing access to the rooms and cleaning and maintaining them. In addition, the department would be required to inspect the lactation rooms at least quarterly for cleanliness, safety, and accessibility. And as mentioned before, sometimes with bills, um, you don't know what needs to be done until the bill is enacted. And in this instance, we found um, the requirement or the necessity to strengthen the bill in this way uh, based on what we were observing over the last couple of years. Uh, so my lactation specialist, who um, uh, I would arguably say is one of the best lactation specialists in the city of New York, uh, selfishly, um, Catherine. Hi. So say good morning to everyone. And um, I want to say thank you to, um, to our president, to Laurie Combo, to also um, Council Member Robert Carnegie, and all those that are involved in making this bill happen. Um, today, as far as us, because I brought my team from Bedford Stuyvesant, so this is from the WIC office. So we just um, had our march earlier this month, and um, we all understand how difficult it is as mothers to breastfeed and how um, the trials and the tribulations that we had to go through. So today, it marks another victory for, the, uh, for women, for babies, and men, and families. And I'm going to say men, because as we have said, that, um, in the room, there are going to be a breast pump. So when the mothers um, pump the milk, the fathers, if they're out with their kids, can come in the room and you know, bre um, bottle feed the breast milk in the room. So the men also, not only do they give us a foot massage and all the nice things. That's right. You know, they, when they're out with, when having that Breast time. Breastfeeding and yes. foot massages. <laughs> <laughs> I figure out how we can strike that the <laughs> When they're out, you know, they can come and have that time as well. So that's also bonding, you know. And breastfeeding, you know, it's one of the barriers in our communities, in our um, non-white communities, colored, um, black and brown communities, that mo mothers face every day. And it's a choice that they make, and they need to know that they are supported. You know, last year I was there um, when the elected officials invited mothers to breastfeed in their office, and because they created lactation rooms where mothers can come and feel safe and comfortable to pump their breast milk. And today, we see that they are following up with more legislation for mandatory annual um, Training, which is important because you need to educate the staff that is around these rooms so that you can understand the importance of breastfeeding uh, to these mothers, as, as well as um, the maintenance of the room. Because I was speaking to uh, one of the gentlemen that um, works here, and he was saying that, you know, the room is well, okay, it's kept free from um, any allergies and, and different things. So it, it shows that, you know, that it shows to the mothers that they are welcome, that they are heard, and that they are included in, in the society. And once we have women and mothers that are happy, mm -hmm. then we know we're going to have happy dads. Mm -hmm. We're going to have happy men, so we're going to have happy families. And um, so for me, I think, you know, once a woman makes that choice, she should have that support. So this is about also about inclusion. And there's one thing more I think should be added to the bill. I don't know if I have said it before. Mm -hmm. Advertising. So I was discussing with um, the Mathieu counselors, and they agreed that advertising the, the rooms, making it more known to the public, is, is one thing that is needed. Because every day we do uh, encounter where they ask, where else can they breastfeed? Mm -hmm. if it's, um, but as I got a list today from Eddie, uh, it shows that you know, we have it in the Bronx, we have it in Staten Island, it's all over. And as they open up, it didn't, we need to have it maybe, as uh, Francine was saying, on the internet. It should be popping up that you know these rooms are available here and there. Um, it could be also on television ads that you know this is where it is. So we need that. Yes, we need that. You know that mo much more. Um, knowledge out there so that mothers can know where they can come. And I think that's just one of the ways. Yeah, so, so with advertising is one of the things that we think is also important. So I want to say thank you to everyone that, has, that is still working hard to make sure that 
women have rights and women are comfortable in their choice to breastfeed. Thank you so much, Catherine. Uh, and like I said, we're gonna we're gonna close out with uh, the majority leader who's had this experience recently, and who I look to um, often for guidance on issues that that are family uh, related. Um, so, uh, Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Thank you. And thank you to all the advocates that are here today. You all are the true champions of bringing this message alive. And I just wanted to something that Councilmember Cornegie spoke about, which is so really so true and reigns so true, is this concept about the over-sexualization of women's bodies. And so I know just in casual conversation with friends, there was this discussion of, you know if you breastfeed, it's gonna mess your breasts up. So it's this whole thing that many women shy away from it because they don't want their breasts to be quote unquote messed up. So here's what I'm gonna tell you about that. They are not gonna look the same afterwards. That's absolutely true. But we can never put vanity over the health and the well-being of our children. And so it's so important that men and women begin to understand the true functionality of our bodies. Mm -hmm. Sure, we all want to be vain. We all want to look good. We all want to. They got push-ups for all of that. They got push-up bras. They got push-up this. They got dresses that'll make you look <laughs> three times bigger than when you started, OK? <laughs> So there's things that you can do. And I'll be honest too, there's also in terms of when you have a baby, you put on a little bit of extra weight. It doesn't come off like instantly, right? But breastfeeding is one of the major contributors to helping you lose weight. So it's taken me now about two years where I feel like my body is starting to come back to normal, so much so that when the borough president sees me, he says, where's the baby, right? Because <laughs> I'm getting back out there. I'm starting to get myself back together again. It takes some time, but don't let, don't let vanity take precedent over your baby's health. And the other one that I received a lot of, and this is from the older generation, they would say, you better give that baby some Similac. I had Similac. I gave someone so Similac. This one had Similac, and they fine. Or I would get the, I would, I would be out with my son, and someone else would I'd be like, oh my goodness, your son is so big, because we, we on that formula. Formula, get the baby big real quick. So there were these things where, you know, people like, your baby's not as big as it. It's all of these different things, right, 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 that are out there that can shame you, that can make you feel. Don't buy into those things, okay? My baby was the exact right average weight the entire time. There were some babies that are bigger, but we in our communities can't get caught up in this big, over average, overweight baby as the mark of healthiness, mm. okay? So it's very important that one, we don't utilize and fall into these stereotypes about your body's not gonna look the same if you breastfeed. Get over that. The second one is making sure that we do not uh, fall into the habits of yesteryear generations of just give that baby some Similac and keep it moving. If that's what you have to do, because of so many other factors that's unfortunate, then that's the decision that you have to make. But I think we all should try to commit, try breastfeeding to the best of our ability and make adjustments where we can based on the surroundings of the outside environment. And we, from a governmental perspective, will try to meet you halfway in your goal of breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So thank you all so very much. Thank you, Borough President Eric Adams, for opening up this house, as you always do, for issues that impact the city of New York. And Councilmember Cornegie and Councilmember Steve Levin, it's so empowering to have so many men who get it at the forefront of this issue. Thank you. So having said that, um, if there are any questions about this particular piece of legislation or the suite of bills that have brought us to this place, um, both myself and the majority leader um, and the borough president would certainly be willing to field uh, any questions. Uh, if there are no questions, thank you so much for coming out. Um, this is uh, the commitment of some members and the council and the borough president to improving the quality of life for children and mothers, in particular in the borough of Brooklyn, but in the city of New York. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh,